Hello again, everyone. Off and running on this latest Thursday edition of Thoroughbred Action. Good to have you with us. Jason Blewett joining you from our clubhouse studios at GPW. Eight races on the card. We've got some track and weather conditions, and all that stuff is coming your way right now. Fast and firm on this Thursday here at GPW. Partly sunny skies in Miami Gardens as well as we move on to the all-main track early double. First race on the dirt, three and up, Philly and Mare. Claiming horses that are running for tags of 10,000. No claims. Pete Aiello is standing by with the call. They're up. Did not mean it gets the first call. Moving between horses. Publicist is up the challenge. Down at the inside, Violent Danger has some speed today. And Violent Danger put right on the lead by Jaramillo as they ran out of the chute. Publicist will move to be second, only a neck off the lead. Two better than Dancing Starlet, who gets a good spot to work from. Third and down toward the inside. Followed fourth by Did Not Mean It, then inside is Galileo's Affair, ahead of Song of Melody, who's off the speed today, and three clear of Moonlight Salsa. Less than five-eighths to run as they go to the half-mile point. And up front, Violent Danger leads the way three parts of a length. Publicist is second. Dancing Starlet at the inside follows along third. Three better than an improving run from Galileo's Affair, who's toward the rail. Out wide is Song of Melody, alongside Did Not Mean It, and far back to Moonlight Salsa. That's the seven of them as they swing around the far turn, three-eighths of a mile to go. Violent Danger has a lead by a length and a quarter. Publicist is there, second, back to third. Dancing Starlet, a driven fourth is Song of Melody. She's in a world of hurt. Down at the inside and trying to move forward is Galileo's Affair, but Violent Danger on the class drop turns for home and widens on the field now by five. Up on the outside and now second is Publicist toward the inside and Galileo's Affair. There's an eighth of a mile to go and Violent Danger has a big lead. The battle strictly for second as gate to wire winner is violent danger for mark tacker and victor barboza jr they win it for fun never a serious threat and five clear galileo's affair up for second publicist was third did not mean it finished fourth speed's been good the inside's been pretty good the last few racing cards at gpw and violent danger the two full of run they never got close to this mark tacker owned victor barboza jr trained philly by violence, ridden a victory by Misael Jaramillo. Race number two on the main, we stretch out around two turns. We've got a three and up claiming race. Claiming prices in this one are $6,250. And they're up. Salsa Cappuccino ridden hard by Lionel Reyes to try to get the early lead up on the outside. El Ferroni has similar tactics, and these two move ahead of the rest of the field led by going to the beach. Judas Sunset between horses, three wide is Gregory Sun. The early trailer is mass approval. Around the first turn they go, and Reyes wanted Salsa Cappuccino on the lead, and she, he gets there. Leads it now by a length and a half. El Ferroni second, going to the beach is third. Gregory Sun, three wide on the outside for the Bug Boy, racing into third now. Then back to Judas Sunset, taken in hand by Manuel Cruz to race three and a half lengths off the lead. The trailer is Grez Mass Approval. They make their way past the 5 eights as they head down the backstretch. The advantage to Salsa Cappuccino, but Il Ferroni turning up the pressure right now. They're racing two lengths ahead of going to the beach, who's a clear-cut third. At the inside, Mass Approval takes over fourth, or rather fifth, and up at the outside, it's Judas Sunset, who's last of all, as three wide Gregory Sun joins the top two. Past the half mile and moving to the far turn, Salsa Cappuccino by only a neck. Up on the outside, here's the run from Il Ferroni to take the lead. Three wide and Gregory Sun for Ramirez, two and a half lengths clear of going to the beach. Judas Sunset giving his head to try to launch an attack. Mass approval is last, and they run to the top of the stretch. Il Ferroni at the quarter mile pole, let go by Mirage and in front off the turn. A host of pursuers, including going to the beach and Judas Sunset. Judas Sunset on the stand side for Manny Cruz with three sixteenths to go. It's Il Ferroni in front. Judas Sunset charging hard on the outside second. Back at the inside, it's going to the beach. Eighth of a mile to go. On the inside, Il Ferroni on the outside. Judas Sunset runs Runs at him. Il Ferroni fights to hold it on the outside, and Judas Sunset can't get by. And the winner is Il Ferroni. Crosses the wire first as taking up late was Judas Sunset. Third was Gregory Sun. Stewards were busy in this one. A fairly lengthy deliberation and inquiry, and in the end, they obviously took down the number six, Il Ferroni, for that mid stretch, deep stretch, drifting and bump, and elevated the number two. Judas Sunset the victory as Manny Cruz and trainer Jillian Andreessen pick up their victory with this three-year-old by point of entry. And with the early double down, we'll take a little breather back with Thursday's third after this.
one of the world's most anticipated thoroughbred racing events of the year returns. The third annual Pegasus World Cup Invitational at Gulfstream Park in South Florida. Drawing competition from around the world with a $16 million purse split between two grade one races. On the dirt and on the turf. Experience the incredible fashion, spectacular world-class service and entertainment. And the unrivaled adrenaline of the Pegasus World Cup Invitational. Saturday, January 26th at Gulfstream Park. Get your tickets now at PegasusWorldCup.com. And here we go. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Action. Thursday's third starts the Rainbow Six and our first of three turf races as well. We'll go five on the grass with this maiden claiming race. And these are two-year-old fillies. Claiming prices are $25,000. And they're off. Yansa was slow to start. Shrew Grit away well, so was Paisley Princess in the center. Lady of Quality moves up, and Lady of Quality will take the lead. Princess Gabby on the outside, second toward the inside, and Paisley Princess trying to secure a spot third. The favorite shall return is back to fourth and trying to angle for racing room. Outside of her goes Shrew Grit. Far outside, that's perfect 10, working two and a half lengths clear of Meyer Crown, who's mid-flight and about her than eight lengths off the lead. The rest are really strung out as Angels and Boots didn't take the turn, trying to punch forward Catherine's Warrior, Miss Sassy, He's back. Yansa blew the start and is last of all as they run to the top of the stretch. With the advantage, it's Lady of Quality, but challenges come. Shall return on the far outside. Princess Gabby between with an eighth of a mile to go. Zayas gets after Shall return to kick on with it, and she now takes the lead. Back to second is Princess Gabby. From the back and rolling is Catherine's Warrior. In deep stretch, Shall return finishes the job nicely. Shall return and Edgar Zayas easy in the end. They won by five. It's very close for second. I think it's Catherine's Warrior ahead of Yansa as the back markers got up for some minor awards. Well, this was the typical Edgar Zayas turf trip doctor trip where Edgar just sat inside, angled out, and shall return, just decimated this field. I mean, she blew the doors off this group for owner trainer Louis Olivares. Here's a Florida bred filly by Cantharos, seven to five, a bargain in hindsight. Fourth race, already time for the early bird late pick five. Main tracking it here at five and a half furlongs, and these are three and up maiden claimers. Claiming prices are 10000 And they're off. Poor start for Fuel Injected Prayer, the newcomer last to begin. Also slow and destroyed, the other newcomer, Flat Zapper. It was a good start for Clear Sky, who's headed off for the early lead from Dr. Dudley, who's away at joint second. Archie Song's on his outside. Enduring Arch is trying to stay in range from fourth Swami Genius to his inside. And at the back are Fuel Injected Prayer and Flat Zapper. They pass the half mile and move to the far turn. Ray Ganpath and Clear Sky pave the path up front, leading a length and a quarter. Dr. Dudley, the nearest pursuer, second toward the outside. Archie Song third, trying to run home from fourth is Swami Genius. Fuel Injected Prayer set down for the drive. He's up into fourth back to fifth and during arch and they run to the top of the stretch there's a quarter of a mile left to go and clear sky still has the lead and he's strong up front by a length and a half dr dudley trying to make some impact from second toward the inside that's a late run from archie song third with an eighth of a mile left to go clear sky whip is out he leads by two dr dudley still second and trying to close ground 16th to go clear sky on top dr dudley trying to lunge late but clear sky has enough in the tank clear sky what about it Dr. Dudley second, Enduring Arch was third, fourth was Archie's song. Speed in a lower level maiden claimer like this is usually a good weapon to have, especially over a track that's been very kind to early speed the last few days. And Clear Sky, the number three, had that in bunches. Leon Minot, the winning trainer, has heated up here the last a couple of weeks as well. And Ray Gampath, your winning rider on the three Clear Sky.
fifth race, arguably the race of the day in my humble estimation. A good field and a real solid field running for $8,000 claiming tags, which is pretty unbelievable. Some hard hitters here as we go seven and a half on the turf. And they're off. Squadron ridden hard out of there to try to get a clear advantage, and he will do just that. Up on the outside, hot and heavy is second. Escape velocity, trying to find a tracking spot third down at the inside. Here's flow motion with some tactical foot. Albert Charles and at the inside, completely bonkers. And the early trailer is Big Money Machine. So the speed of the speed is Squadron as they head around the first turn. Squadron leads three parts of a length. Hot and heavy won't let him get it too easy a time of it. He's up on the outside second. Racing in third is Flow Motion. Zayas has him under restraint about three lengths off the top two. A length better than a fourth running escape velocity. Completely bonkers. The veteran is fifth at the rail. Racing ahead of Big Money Machine. Albert Charles is last of all with half a mile left to go. With the advantage, it's Squadron in front by a neck on the outside. That's still hot and heavy from second. Flow Motion is third. Moving to be fourth is completely bonkers. He got inside of Escape Velocity, then Big Money Machine and Albert Charles. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Squadron has been hounded for a long time by Hot and Heavy. Completely bonkers with a rail run under Mirage. Needs some place to go. Out wide on the course is Flow Motion. Big Money Machine kickstarts a rally in the yellow blinkers and they're at the top of the stretch. Can completely bonkers gets through. He cuts the corner and tries to secure that rail spot. Meanwhile, Flow Motion is up to take the lead. Never did getting through was completely bonkers as Big Money Machine is on the attack now. And Big Money Machine and Jose Bautista stride forward for the lead, but Squadron battles back. And here's Squadron coming again. Squadron has the lead. Flow Motion checks out of it. Squadron won it. What the world? Squadron looked dead beat turning for home, but battled on under Camacho to beat Big Money Machine. This was about as game and effort, I think, as you could ever come across. The number three squadron looked like he was beat numerous times from the Port of Paul home, but somehow, some way, dug in and turned back everybody. A lot of heart with this four-year-old by midshipman, trained by Yvonne Belsor for Bruno Schickendons off the claim today. Sammy Camacho, a good job there in the trenches, keeping squadron together when it counted most. And here we go with race number six as we start that final pick three on the main track, sprinting, three and up Philly Amare, $16,000 claimers. And they're off. Pretty overdriven like a rocket and right to the top. Two already clear of Super Duper Girl who moves to be second. On the outside, Cool Sky is situated in third. Back to fourth, Dreaming of Mermaids as Super Duper Girl slams on the brakes. And in fact, she's being taken out of the race. The two Super Duper Girls gone wrong in his last. They go to the half mile point and Prince are pretty overdriven. Now leads by two over Cool Sky second. Dreaming of Mermaids at the inside is third. These three have moved well ahead of fourth running She's a Princess. Then just a Coyote. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Three furlongs left to go. Pretty overdriven and Edgar Zayas calling the shots in front by two. Dreaming of mermaids to the inside of Cool Sky, second and third. Well clear of the others as they run to the top of the stretch. Pretty overdriven has the lead. The margin's a length and a half, almost two. Cool Sky to the outside of Dreaming of Mermaids, still second and third. Cool Sky floated a bit wide. That's good news for Pretty Overdriven fans as she cut the corner and maintains the lead. Pretty Overdriven at the eighth pole on top by two and a half. Second Dreaming of Mermaids to the outside in Cool Sky, a late run from She's a Princess. She actually has a shot for second, but Tribby, Pretty Overdriven is still in front, and Pretty Overdriven goes gate to wire. Cool Sky gets up for second, Dreaming of Mermaids third, then she's a princess. I'm going to call two to one an overlay, even in 2020 hindsight, with the very speedy drop down, the number five, pretty overdriven, who I thought for sure had to be favored in this race. She wasn't. She was the speed. She was plummeting in class, and she had the connections with trainer Kathleen O'Connell and leading rider Edgar Zayas, who just picked up his 35th victory of the meet. And we're three quarters of the way home today. Six down, two to go. That late double is up next. The Fall Turf Festival is underway at Gulfstream Park West. Mark your calendars because on Saturday, November 10th, Gulfstream will be offering eight steaks for Florida breads, three on the turf, totaling $600,000. There will be four races for two-year-olds, many with aspirations of competing in the winter and spring classics. Don't forget, you can watch and wager on Gulfstream Park West races in our world-class Silks Simulcast Center, located on the first floor at beautiful Gulfstream Park.
Join us at Gulfstream Park and Gulfstream Park West on Saturday, November 10th. And welcome back. Down the stretch we go. Race number seven on this 28th day of racing this meet at Gulfstream West will be our final turf race as well. It'll go at five furlongs. We've got some three and up Philly Amer $8,000 claimers as we set it on up once again to Big Pete Aiello. And they're off. Bonnie Scott was off in a tangle and is last to begin. Good start inside for Gracias Adios being sent hard as Drinks on Maggie. And Drinks on Maggie goes after Gracias Adios far outside in fun and games. Bonnie Scott's between horses. Freckles Can is along the rail. Pray, pray, pray is four wide. Two back to hand me the cash, then Bird of Peace. And the trailer is Enigmatica. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Gracias, adios, has the lead by an neck. Crying for racing room as Freckles can toward the rail third. Second is Drinks on Maggie. Fun and Games is on the outside of the third running horse. A length and a half better than Bonnie Scott. Then comes a retreating run from Pray, Pray, Pray with a quarter of a mile to go. Off the turn on the stretch drive. Here's Daylight for Freckles can. She's been crying for room and she gets it now. We'll see if she can kick after the leader. And that leader is Gracias, adios. Into the clear and Pray, Pray, Pray's back for more. Final eighth of a mile. Gracias. Adios. Fending off challenges. Pray, pray, pray with a final lunge on the outside. Here's pray, pray, pray. Gracias. Adios. Gracias. Adios. Beat pray, pray, pray. A half a length. Freckles can. A third run there from Fun and Games in fourth. Big speed from the get-go for the four. Gracias. Adios as Romero Mirage, who is by far the best apprentice rider, arguably in the country. Uh, Romero was able to put that tough DQ behind him back in the second, riding for Rico Mirage on a Philly by Adios Charlie. Big speed and just held on. Let's wrap things up. Race number eight. We've got some maiden claimers. These are two-year-olds bringing down the curtain. Last call at six and a half furlongs. There, Remigate. And runners away. Our Mercedes boy from the outside gate begins well. Nairobi tries to run with him in the early stages. Here's the big favorite, Venezuelan warrior down at the inside third. Away fourth is Golden Line of alongside Malibu Illusion, who's out in the center, working between horses. That's red one. And then it's a gap of another four or five to the trailer, the newcomer, Calagero. Down the back stretch and going to the half mile point. Nairobi shakes free on a length advantage. Our Mercedes boy on the rebid second. Venezuelan warrior is third toward the rail. These top three have worked five or six ahead of Eric the salesman who moves up to take fourth. Two back to golden line of. Then it's back to the outside in Malibu Illusion with red one as they round the far turn. Three eighths of a mile away with the advantage. It's still Nairobi by a length. Our Mercedes boy is second. These two have kicked away from the favorite. Venezuelan warrior who's back to third. Welcome clear of the others with a quarter of a mile to go. Nairobi just let go, so our Mercedes boy now struts his stuff. Off the turn and then stretch drive and our Mercedes boy wheels for home on top by two and a half. Back to second is Nairobi, then a Venezuelan warrior with an eighth of a mile to go. Our Mercedes boy has the lead. Nairobi, oddly, trying to get back running again. He is second best and he is second best indeed as our Mercedes boy is an easy winner. Wrapped up by Zayas and four on top. Nairobi second, Venezuelan warrior third, then Eric the salesman. Close after that, Calagero figured it out and closed ground to get a minor award. Hard chase outside for the nine, our Mercedes boy, who debuted in a race that wound up producing three next out winners. You can make it four, as this uh, two-year-old Florida bred by Overdriven was just much the best for Able Racing. Georgina Baxter, and how about that leading rider, Edgar Zayas, his third win on the afternoon. And that's it. Eight up, eight down. We'll do it all again tomorrow afternoon. Astronic 5, $100,000 guaranteed pool that begins at about 3.55 with race eight at Laurel Park. We've got nine races on our GPW Friday card. Happy handicapping. We'll see you tomorrow. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. 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 Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.